Hi there, it's Ben Hassel here. In this class, I wanna show you how to quickly make a thumbnail for YouTube um, from your videos in Final Cut Pro 10. So essentially what we'll be doing here is taking a freeze frame uh, from our video and then looking at how we can composite on text, change the color of the image um, so that the text pops out a little bit better and then exporting out an image from Final Cut Pro. And we'll also run through the process as you're uploading to YouTube, how you can change the thumbnail um, to be the custom image that you've exported from Final Cut Pro. Now, you can use Photoshop or other image editing applications to create the thumbnails for your YouTube videos, but it's also easy to do it in Final Cut Pro. And if you don't have Photoshop or other editing applications such as those, then working with Final Cut Pro is a really great solution. It means you're keeping everything within one application and means that you can uh, learn a few more skills in Final Cut Pro as you're working through things. So, so let's dive in here and have a look at how we work through this process. So we're gonna be moving between Final Cut Pro and YouTube here. And essentially what we're gonna be doing in YouTube is uploading a video um, and then looking at how we change the thumbnail. In Final Cut Pro, we're gonna be looking at how we create that thumbnail. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab the still I wanna use for YouTube. So if I move through my footage here, I'm gonna find a frame that I wanna use for the thumbnail. So we're gonna work with this Calvados making footage from France and I'm gonna grab this still. So what I like to do here is grab a freeze frame of this still and then make a new project of that, just so I'm keeping my edit and my original video separate. So I'm gonna do Alt and F, and that's gonna make a freeze frame there. Now, there's a neat trick here. If you wanna make a freeze frame and then copy it or cut it and then undo what you've just done. So I'm gonna take this freeze frame, select it, do Command and X, and then just do Command and Z or Edit Undo twice, and it will pull my clip back together. Now I still have that freeze frame copied. So if I go to file, new and project, I'm gonna call this project YouTube thumbnail. And then I can do command and V and paste in that freeze frame. So you can see if I do shift and Z, essentially what I've got here is the freeze frame of that video. So what we're gonna do here is export out a single frame of this freeze frame and use that as our YouTube still. So it can be a JPEG or a PNG. YouTube will process either one of those types of format. So the first thing I wanna do here is just pull the color back um, in Final Cut Pro. So what I'm gonna do here is bring up the inspector on the right hand side here. So if you go to window and show in workspace, and we wanna make sure the inspector um, is turned on on the right hand side. So window, show in workspace and check inspector and it will show the inspector on the right hand side. And then what we wanna do is I wanna make this image a little easier to place text over the top. So I'm gonna use the color board, the color adjustments here to do that. So if I just come to just below my viewer here in Final Cut Pro 10, I'm gonna click this button and show color board, which is command and six. And that's gonna show me um, the color, saturation and exposure options that I have here. So essentially to make an image, and that's one of the reasons I've chosen this image, easier to place text over the top, I wanna to reduce the contrast of that image, and that means we can place text over the top really easily, which is perfect for a YouTube thumbnail. So I basically wanna squash the blacks and the whites, either making the image lighter or darker. So we can place lighter text or darker text over this video. So if I pull my blacks up here, and then my whites down, you can see I'm basically gonna be squashing the color in that image, and I can adjust the kind of midpoint of that by moving the white point up and down. So this kind of image here would work well if we wanted to play, place dark text over the top of our project here. So if I go to my generators up here at the top left, and I'm gonna jump up to my titles, and we're just gonna go for the basic title here. So in the title search, I'm gonna type in basic or BAS, and you should get the basic title listed here. And now if we pull this title over the top of our clip here, you can see at the moment the text is white, so it's kind of hard to read. But if I go up to the inspector on the top right, I can jump into the type options in here and we can change the color of that under the face option. And then if we make this a, a darker type and we'll just leave a little bit of color in there. So there's a little bit of something going on and we'll increase the size of the type. So you can see here, the type is gonna be popping out from that background nicely. So if we go back to the video here, and I'm just gonna to go to the layer in the background. So you can see here that when the video is in its original format, the title um, has a little less contrast with the background. So it's fighting against some of these colors that are a similar tone. But once we've squashed the color there, then we get this nice popping of the type. The other 
option that I like to use here once I've squashed the colors one way or another um, is to add a colorize effect here which is going to colorize the darker and lighter areas of the image with a certain color. So if I come across the right hand side here and I just want to bring up my effect so this little button here or command of five is going to show my audio and video effects and then I'm going to pull on the colorize filter over the top of my video and you can see now we get a nice colorization of that image in the background. Now the type is not quite the right color here so I'm going to jump back into the type options and just go down and change the face so that it's a bit of a, a lighter type here and you can see we're getting a nice level of contrast when we choose a color from this lighter area of the image there. So I'm going to choose a little bit of an off-white color here that's going to contrast nicely with my background. So in the colorize options that we have here under the video tab in the inspector we can essentially and we just need to jump back to the original video clip we can essentially select some colors that kind of give a nice backdrop to your type and kind of let the type stand out nicely so the colorize and the squashing of the colors using the the color board really make a difference so we can squash the colors in one of two ways so i can make all the colors lighter so we get kind of get this washed out look or if we go the other way we can make everything a little bit darker um, and squash the colors um, so that they're a little bit darker and maybe darken down the image. So we're going to get a different effect one way or the other depending on which way we, we kind of choose to go. You can make a decision about what you want to do with your title images but essentially there's some quick tips for increasing the contrast of the, the title before you actually try to upload your YouTube video. So let's just click on the title here and double click in here and we're just going to type in the title quick title for our film and I'm going to click away from it which allows me to come back in and position it and make sure that it's nice and centered but the main thing here is that when we're thinking about this as a thumbnail if I zoom out a little bit more you can see that the text is going to have a nice contrast with the background image and that's done by pushing and putting these colors around and making sure the text is standing out in the foreground. We can also add some graphic generators in here as well. So if we come up to the generators and titles, I'm just going to minimize the titles here. We've got some nice uh, solids and backgrounds that we can place in here too. So we might pick out a custom color and just drop it down in between our timeline. Now I'm not worried about anything that's hanging off the end here because I'm always going to go back and just export out the one frame. So I'm really just worried about one frame of what I have here. So I'm going to jump back in my inspector here now that I've got this generator selected and just select this option and you can see here we can select a color here for that box okay so we'll kind of go for a similar blue that we had in the background of our image okay and then because this is a generator if we go to the video options we can jump into crop crop the right crop the top and crop the bottom so if you want to create a graphic background for part of your, your text that you're overlaying um, on top of your, your video and um, then you can do that too. So we can create a different um, style of title for our YouTube videos. And we can take this in some different ways as well. So if we take away the cropping here, I'm just going to reset the crop here and come into my masks, select the draw mask. And I really love this tool. So if I drag the draw mask on, I can add in some points. So I'm just clicking dot to dot here and I can create a kind of half and half title where I've got a graphic on the left um, and then I can adjust my my title as well to kind of match that so we can align the text slightly differently modify the cropping here as well so we could have a bit more of an interesting design now I'm not professing that this is the most cutting edge design but you get an idea of how we can push and pull these shapes around in Final Cut Pro with the generator shapes, the text, and then also the color in the background um, to get this nice effect. I think I'm just gonna switch this color up a little bit. So we're gonna go for a little bit of an orange here, and then for the text in the foreground, I'm gonna go for a nice the text in the foreground here. I'm just gonna pull that much closer to a, to a white, so take um, any color out of that really. The other effect you might wanna add in here um, we could use our 3D text if we wanted to or if you want to help the 
text pop out from the background, we could add in a drop shadow here. Um, and if you show the drop shadow options in the inspector on the top right, we can add a little bit more blur in there, reduce the distance and drop the opacity and it will just give it that nice little pop from the background. Um, so not an intense drop shadow, but just something that's gonna help your text pop out a little bit um, from that background. So let's just do one last thing here. So I'm gonna grab this layer and I'm gonna duplicate it up. So I'm holding down the Alt key to duplicate that up. And I'm just gonna take the layer behind, come in here and just drop down the brightness of my color here. So I'm gonna look for a slightly darker orange. Okay, and then I'm just gonna pull out my handles here for my control points for the draw mask. And you can see here now, um, once we've done that, if I just drop down the brightness of that a little bit, you can see we get a nice little effect below that, okay? So we're starting to create a more interesting uh, design here with the graphics that we have available in Final Cut Pro. So let's go ahead and share this. So I'm gonna go to, so I'm gonna come up here to my share button so on the top right. And I have added in here um, my save current frame option. Now, you may not see that um, in your list of share options, so just go to Add Destination, and in here, you'll see some options for saving out the current frame, okay? So we can drag this across to the left here, okay? And you can choose which image format you wanna export out. Uh, JPEG's a good one to go for, and it will also compress it down um, a little bit. Okay, so once you've got that in there, you can jump back and go to the share button. I'm just gonna remove the duplicate version that I have here. Okay, so now we'll jump to the share button. We'll go to save current frame. Okay, go to settings. I think I had mine set to PNG before, so I'm just gonna set it to JPEG. So even though we've set a default of PNG, we can still change it to JPEG at a later stage. So press next. We're gonna save it right to the desktop as YouTube thumbnail, save that out. And then I'm just gonna go back to my previous edit and I'm just gonna mark an in point and an out point and export out a short video so that we have something to upload. So we'll call this YouTube thumbnail clip. And now we'll jump into YouTube and just show you where you change your settings to upload your custom thumbnail. So we'll jump to Chrome here and we'll click on the upload button. So you need to be logged in. Okay, great, the share is successful. So you need to be logged in here to see the upload button and for it to work. And then once we're in here, we can select the files to upload. We can jump to the desktop. I'll grab my YouTube thumbnail clip and this should be a pretty quick upload. I'm gonna change this to private. As this is uploading, um, we can add it to playlists, and we can add in the keyframes, we can add in a description. We can also click down here and change to our customized thumbnail. So I'm just gonna select my YouTube thumbnail, open that up, and now once that's done, you can see instead of a still from that video, which we could select here, um, this sometimes happens, so I still need to go back and select it one more time. It hasn't saved that thumbnail. So now I've got my new image, I can press done. Um, if you're publishing it publicly, this option will say public. And if I click on this video, you'll see that it jumps straight into the video here, but the thumbnail for this, um, if I jump to my channel and my videos, then you'll see the thumbnail now is a thumbnail that I've designed and uploaded, okay? So that's a technical process for designing and uploading thumbnails from Final Cut Pro 10. I hope that's useful. If you have any questions about editing in Final Cut Pro, then please don't hesitate to send me a tweet at Ben Housel and I will take your suggestions. And if you have any footage that you wanna share with me for working with tutorials, then I'm always pleased to get new footage to work with, especially if it comes along with a, a question. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.